Hi, this is Chad Gleidkowski and welcome to the next installment of The Journey. This week we're going to talk about something that is really totally un-American. Our whole idea of an America is that I am an individual and I can live as an individual. I have individual rights. But Jesus seems to talk about life not as an individual, but as a community where there are people who gather together in his name and even the name, when we hear the word church, the idea behind it, the picture behind it, is people who are pulled out of one place and are brought to another. And we're all people of faith, and we are to incur be, and we are encouraged to be with other people who are of faith. And a part of it is for our protection and for our safety and our encouragement. There is birds and Australia, they're called budgies, and they get together every once in a while by the million upon million upon millions of them. And they all get together, and they're just these tiny little things. They look like parakeets. I don't know if you've ever been to a pet store where they have these little parakeets. You know, there's not much to them. But man, you put millions of millions of them together, and they're a force to be reckoned with. Not only are they a force, but there's great protection from their enemy vultures. So we're going to start our time together where Paul says to us in Ephesians, we speak the truth in love. We must grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body joined and knit together by every ligament which it is equipped. And each part is working properly, promotes the body's growth, and building itself up in love. We are to speak the truth in love. We are to have this idea of a body that we are together. If all you do is come to church on a Sunday morning and you go home, I got a guarantee for you is that when problems come and they're coming like a freight train, you will fail. You will fall because if you're alone, you have no one yeah, you have Jesus and God is on your side, but where are the people who are his arms, his legs, his hands, and his feet to encourage you? This, uh, these verse, The verse we just read talks about these different things. First is that we are to grow. It's the idea of increase. We're spreading. It's greater and greater respect. We're growing to be and become more like who? It says we're to be more like Jesus. Secondly, it says that we are a body. All bodies, whether it's a single cell, whether it's a more, a more complex form, it's cooperation within the body. You cannot have a cell that says, oh, I'm all by myself, or I'm a part of a cell, I'm all by myself. No, they work together in harmony, and they are joined. It is pulled together close, and it talks about an ongoing process. It's joined, but it keeps joining and going closer and closer together. It says also that we are knit. We are caused to come together. We're pulled together. My grandmother used to sit. She was making spaghetti sauce and ironing clothes, and she'd sit there, and, she, and she'd say, she crocheted. She, she knitted or she crocheted, brought that uh, twine together. And we are equipped, supplied at the right time with the right amount. It's God's spiritual FedEx delivery at the right time, at the right place, at the right moment. He doesn't give us grace in advance, but it's at the right time. And we are to work together with power. It's a coordination and skill. You know, you just don't pick up a golf club and say, well, gee, I'm going to go on the uh, PGA and start whacking the ball 300 yards. No, it's something that takes work. It takes practice. Any sport, any activity, any skill takes work. And finally, it is we are to increase. The bottom line is more growth, more fruit, because the goal of the life that Jesus gives us is to give it away, is to pour it out. Someone once said, my responsibility, what I can handle is I can't handle and I'm not responsible for and I can't call somebody else how, how they give out their life. But I'm responsible before God to how I spill my life out before him and before other people. 
and let's put some meat on the bones about how do we do this? What is the practical way that we are to live in fellowship, two people in a ship together? Uh, and one uh, Romans 12 says, for as in one body, we have many members and not all the members have the same function. So we who are many are one body in Christ. And individually, we are members of each other. The word that keeps getting repeated is members, different parts. We all belong to one another. The idea of being alone and isolated and sitting in our in our houses just watching TV or shows on the internet, it isn't that way at all. We are members of each other. It's a limb, it's a part, and this is not optional. A car has wheels and brakes and all these different pieces and lights and electrical, but they all have to work together. They are all members of one another. For by grace, give the grace given to me, Paul says, I say to everyone among you, not to think of yourselves more highly than you ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. We are to think with sober judgment. Now there's a phrase we don't hear too often, sober judgment. It means to be of sound mind, to have self-control. We're to have a really honest evaluation. We are to look at ourselves before God and say, this is who I really am. Warts and all, cracks and all. And then sober judgment also means that I am to get better. I'm not just to say, well, this is the way I am. No, I am to learn. I've, I'm personally on a learning journey, learning how to be a better communicator so I can be more of a disruptive force for God in this crazy mixed up world. Paul says in Ephesians 4, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beg you to lead a life, what? Worthy of the calling to which you have been called with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. So how are we called to treat one another? We are to maintain unity. Maintenance, maintenance. I don't know how much you spend on your car, but you're going to spend more on maintenance than actually buying it. It takes time. It takes effort. It takes investment of our energies. Repairing, getting new tires, new batteries, new belts, changing the oil, maintenance on our car. What is the maintenance that you and I are providing to ourselves and to those around us who are in the spiritual body of believers? We are to maintain that. Romans 12, 9 says, let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with what? Mutual affection. We are to be devoted. Outdo one another in showing honor. Mutual love. The idea is not one person loving the other person and the other says, ah, I'm not interested. It is mutual love. It is mutual respect. The idea of this kind of love is, goes beyond a handshake. It says, I am truly interested in what is best for you. I have this deep down desire to be of help, to be of service. That doesn't mean I do whatever you tell me, but I do things to be helpful. And I am to honor that person when I place value on them. Uh, it's, a, it's a price tag, if you will. What do we value? The things that cost a lot. When I see another believer, someone else who, who follows Jesus, they have a price on them. And that price is the price of Jesus himself who gave himself for them as well as for me. So I am to honor them. Philippians 2 says, Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourself. Let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. I am to not uh, be just looking at myself to see, well, how do I feed myself? How do I take care of myself? How do I clean myself? How do I get better myself? I have to look at the interests of others. You know, not just the important stuff, but the unimportant stuff, the small things, because it's the small things that really, really will uh, make a big difference. 
I once had a friend who had terrible, terrible headache, and he went to the doctor, and the doctor said, you got to get to the hospital. He went to the hospital, and they had performed all these tests, and it was the little thing. It was a sinus infection. It wasn't a brain tumor. It wasn't the big thing. It was a small thing. But it was in taking care of the small thing that he found relief and release. So what does this kind of life look like? What is the kind of life of living in fellowship, in community, in communion with other people? Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things to, into his hands, John 13 says, that he had come from God and that Jesus was going back to God. What did he do? He got up from the table, took off his outer robe and tied a towel around him. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. This is an unbelievable demonstration. Jesus, who said, he was God incarnate from eternity past. He claims to be the creator and the sustainer of the universe. No one ever spoke like him, raised people from the dead, healed the sick, gave sight to the blind. And what does he do? He got up from where he was. It's time for you and I to get up out of our seat. Next, he took off. He took off what, his outer clothing. He showed himself to be humble. He took off the clothes so that he could get dirty. What are you and I unwilling to do in service to Jesus, to other people? He then tied a towel. He put on the heart of a humble servant. He, he dressed himself for work. He said, I'm going to get ready to get down and get dirty. Not for dirty jobs, but to serve those people around me. He then poured out water. He provided what was needed for the job. He then washed the feet. It's time for you and I not to talk about it, but to do it. To get down and serve, just like Jesus served, and then to wipe. He wiped their feet. After we've served, it's time to clean up, isn't it? It's time to do that. So let me ask you a question. Who did Jesus wash the feet of? Who were these guys? These were not leaders of the synagogue or leaders from the temple. They weren't the king. They weren't the queen. They weren't people in elected officials. They weren't rich. They were working people just like you and me. They were people of the land, fishermen, tax collectors. They worked in an office. They worked out in the land. They got out. These are the people Jesus washed their feet of. So how are we to treat one another? We are to treat one another with great respect. We are to treat one another with great honor. But to do all those things, we have to be with one another. Yeah, a phone call, a text, Facebook, all that's good. I'm all for that. But to do it, to be able to demonstrate that kind of love, the Jesus kind of love, you got to be with people. You got to get out of your holy huddle and get down and do it. What's stopping you and I from calling up somebody and saying, hey, let's get together for breakfast. Hey, let's get together for lunch. Hey, let's go play golf. Hey, let's go do this. What is stopping you and me from doing it? I'll tell you, our self-interest. Jesus abandoned his self-interest. He stopped it. And he got down on his knees. It starts with knowing. It says that Jesus knew he had come from God and knew that he was going back. It starts with that and then it went on to service. It's time for you and I to know that God loves us. It's time for us to know that Jesus came and died for us. It's time for us to know that he got up and was raised from the dead and he's sitting on the right hand of God the Father on the throne. It's time for us to know that those things, but if we really know them, they will lead us to action. Leonardo da Vinci said, I have been impressed with the urgency of doing. Knowing is not enough. We must apply. Being willing 
is not enough. We must do. All I can say to my brother Leonardo is amen. Would you pray with me? Our Father and our God, I thank you that you're that kind of guy. The kind of God who didn't uh, say, stay away. You're not the kind of God who said, uh, you get down there. But you're the kind of God who came in humility and washed people's feet. May we be willing to follow your example in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thanks again for coming. God bless and bye-bye.